So I'm going to go through a proof with you today, which is the cos A minus B proof. Um, and what you have to prove is that cos A minus B is equal to cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. And before we get into it, I just want us to, to think back to our unit circle. OK, so a unit circle is called a unit circle because it has a radius length of one unit. OK, so if we imagine that this is the origin, then from here to here is a radius length of one. From here to here is one, from here to here is one, and so on. Okay. Now, we also know that if we had our quadrants in our unit circle, so just shown the x axis and so y axis there and the x axis here. So I'm just going to do light perforated lines just so you can kind of see that it's on an axis. Okay. So this is your x. And this is your y. Now, we know that, let's say on our circle, this is the point 1, 0. This is 0, 1. This is minus 1, 0. And this is 0, minus 1. Okay, so we're all familiar with that. If I was to go to this point here, I've gone over some value of x and up some value of y. So we'd call this point here x, y. Now, we're also used to seeing that it has this little right angle triangle that you can create. OK, so if we create this little right angle triangle here and we're talking about the angle that has made has been made here from the horizontal with the origin. So if we call this theta for a moment. Well, in terms of X and in terms of Y, we have moved, so imagine this is flat, and it's like the hands of a clock, it's just going the wrong way. It's gone up this way, okay? So what we want to show is how would we refer to this angle here? As it's a right angle triangle, we can see that the opposite is representative of the Y, okay? So it's gone up a value of Y, and the adjacent is representative of the X. So in relation to this, if we wanted to express, say, x for the moment, well, the adjacent is the x value over 1. So cos, we know cos of theta represents the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cos of theta is going to be x over 1. So cos of theta is equal to 1. And similarly, sine of theta is the opposite, which is y over 1. So sine of theta is equal to y. So instead of writing x, y here, we can actually write cos theta sine theta. Now that should be revision for you from when we looked at the unit circle. And we'll call this this. Um, We can call this Q. OK, this is the point Q for now. And this point over here would also be a cos theta and a sine theta because it's an X and a Y. So cos theta, sine theta, but we'll call this point at P. Now, if we look at the angles, let's say we're just dealing with this one in here and we're going to call this B. OK, so this green part is B. So instead of theta, we're going to change this to cos B sine B. OK, so it's clear. B and B. And over here, this angle is A, the large section here from, from the horizontal all the way back to here is A. OK, I'll shade that all in. That's A, OK. So if we want to look then just at this little section in here, so not starting on the horizontal, just this section in here, this part here would be A without the B. So all the way to A would take away the B. So this part here is A minus B. Okay, so we're going to change this as well to cos A sine A because it's related to the angle A. 
Now, hopefully the diagram makes a bit of sense to you. You can understand the key things here is you understand where the cos and sine came from. They are representative of the x, y because of our unit circle. We can have this angle here that was created by turning from here all the way back to this angle A. Okay, then we have from here just to B. But what if I want to know the measure of just this angle in here without starting at the horizontal? It's the angle A subtract the angle B. Now, how will we prove that? So we want to find this angle here, P, O, Q, because we're calling, remember, this is the origin. So we want to find the angle P, O, Q, which is representative of A minus B. So we're going to use two different formulae that we already know and we, we know well which is the distance formula and the cosine formula. So I'm going to draw a line that connects P to Q. Okay. And we can see that this line is opposite to the angle A minus B. So if you were using your cosine rule, then you'd be using PO and OQ and PQ and then this angle A minus B. And another rule that we can use or a formula that we're currently um, very well aware of since our junior search is the distance formula. So we're gonna start off with the distance formula to find the measure of this line here, PQ. Okay, so distance formula, sorry, it's a bit wonky there. Um, distance formula we know is the square root of X2 minus X1 to be squared plus y2 minus y1 to be squared. And for pq, p is equal to cos a sine a. So that's x1, y1. We'll actually say that this is x2, y2, just because it's over here. And q, is cos b sine b which we'll call x1 y1 okay so let's go ahead and fill this in and i'd rather not have the square root symbol here so rather than have this square root what i'm going to say is pq squared is equal to and i can get rid of this okay so pq squared is equal to x 2 minus x1 to be squared plus y2 minus y1 to be squared, which in this case is cos of a minus cos of b to be squared plus sine of a minus sine of b to be squared. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to square those out. So we're going to have, uh, it'll be cos a by cos a, which will give me cos squared a minus cos a minus uh, times cos b would be minus it's going to end up being two minus minus two cos a b and then plus cos squared b because minus by minus gives me plus then same thing here plus sine squared a minus two sine a sine b plus sine squared b okay now, remember from our trigonometric identities, page 13, this part here. Cos squared A plus sine squared A is equal to 1. So if I can group a cos squared A and a sine squared A, I can replace it with a 1. So look, I have a cos squared A here and a sine squared A. So the two of them together can be rewritten as 1. So I'm crossing those out, but I'm replacing it with a 1. I have a cos squared b and a sine squared b, so the two of them together can be a 1. And then I have minus 2 cos a cos b minus 2 sine a sine b. All right, so that's going to be 2 minus 2 cos a cos b. plus sine a sine b and the reason for the plus is because if i've taken minus two out as a common factor 
minus 2 by cos A cos B is going to give me minus 2 cos A cos B. And minus 2 by plus is going to give me minus. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm going to leave it like that um, for the moment. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our cosine rule. So this is an expression, remember, for PQ squared. Now, if we are using the cosine rule, and remember that we know that this is the unit circle. So from O to P is one unit, one unit in length, and from O to Q is one unit in length. So if I was trying, trying to find, sorry, um, PQ squared, then it's PQ on the outside, okay? So I'm going to say, oh, sorry, PQ squared is equal to O to P squared, which we know is 1, plus O to Q squared, minus 2 by O to P, by O to Q, by cos of A minus B. So P to Q squared is equal to 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1 squared, which is 1. I'm not going to write that in. Um, minus 2 times 1 times 1 times cos of A minus B. So let's just tidy up. 1 and 1 is 2. Minus 2 by 1 is minus 2. By 1 is minus 2. So minus 2 cos A minus B. So now I have an expression for PQ squared from the cosine rule. And I have an expression for P, P squared from the distance formula. So if I have two formulae that are both equal to PQ squared, well, then they must be equal to one another. So let's line them up then. 2 minus 2 cos A minus B from the cosine must then be equal to 2 minus 2 cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So 2 and 2, they cancel, because if I brought that one over, it would go to 0. And then you can see that minus 2 is a common factor, so minus 2 and minus 2. So I'm left with cos a minus b is equal to cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. Okay, and that's the end of that proof. This is one of the most important proofs on the course. It comes up so often and there are a good few mandatory proofs that you need to learn in this section, but this is the basic one and everything else stems from this. So the key things I want you to take away from this is it's based on the unit circle. If you can draw the diagram and show that you're going from one point here, which you're calling Q, and one point here, which you're calling P, and you can show that to get to the point P, you have this larger angle A, to get to the point Q, you have this smaller angle B, well then the distance between, or the difference between these, this, these two lines, the angle that's formed between these two lines is A subtract B. And the key thing that you're using here is you're using the distance formula and you're using the cosine formula to get an expression for PQ squared. When you have an expression for PQ squared from the distance formula and from the cosine formula, you let those two equal to each other and then you just simplify.